What's up guys, it's Zach and today I'm going to be explaining how all 30 NBA teams could win the 2024-2025 NBA championship. Hope everyone's having an amazing day so far. Uh, NBA playoffs are still in, currently going on. They're in the conference finals, but I wanted to make this video because I just thought of it. I thought it'd be pretty funny to do. So without further ado, let's get things started with the Washington Wizards. They literally need to burn down the entire building and uh, build from scratch. So, I only don't like the Wizards. Because they, yeah, they have Denny Abia and Bilal Kalubale, but like Kyle Kuzma, Jordan Poole, I feel like they're getting close to their ceiling already, and they don't have a lot of young assets that I'm a big fan of, so Wizards, I'm sorry, take the number 30 spot. Number 29, we've got the Detroit Pistons, they just went on a 28 game losing streak, I think they need to go back to the Palace, because ever since they left the Palace of Auburn Hills, they haven't won a playoff game, they haven't won a playoff game, isn't that, isn't that just a crazy stat? Up next, we've got the Charlotte Hornets. Aside from LaMelo Ball and Brandon Miller, the rest of this team could just, again, they're all these teams are rebuilding for a reason. They have no really good young assets that they could use. And, yeah, Hornets, we'll see what you guys do with your, your sixth overall pick because, again, the Hawks got stupid lucky in the draft lottery. Up next, we got the Brooklyn Nets. Nets fans, you guys won't be competitive while you're on the Ben Simmons contract. There's just absolutely no way to build a competent roster around them you guys had your shot with kd Kyrie, and james harden you got all of 17 games of that enjoy sucking for the next 10 years speaking of that we got the chicago bulls they've been needing to blow it up ever since 2021 to be honest with you uh the fit of zach Levine, demar Derozan, and nikola vucevic never made sense to anybody uh patrick williams was a big bust at the fourth overall pick i think it's time to blow it up Our next got the atlanta hawks the worst thing you could be in the nba is a team that's good enough to make the play-in tournament, but not good enough to make the playoffs, which is why the Bulls and the Hawks are right here. Well, unless you're the Hawks and you win the draft lottery, that rigged draft lottery. But, uh, I mean, Trey Young, DeJounte Murray, and Alexander Saar might be able to get something done, and, and Jalen Johnson. But I do believe Clint Capella needs to go. I think DeAndre Hunter needs to go, and they need to move some pieces around. Maybe they do need to trade uh, Trey Young to the Spurs. And then just re do a quick little reset that way or get rid of DeJounte Murray. Whoever's the oldest out of the two, they need to go. Up next, got the Portland Trailblazers. Man, this team was an absolute dumpster fire. Actually, I'm moving them behind the Hawks. But just because of uh, the Jeremy Grant contract is not great. DeAndre Ayton is not great. And uh, Scoot Henderson was not able to play enough games to even make an all-rookie team as the second overall pick. No bueno. Up next, we got the Utah Jazz. I, I, I'm moving them behind the Hawks as well. I'd say one, two, three, four, five, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so Blazers would be here. So Jazz, Hawks. I, I was kind of just throwing them all in the bottom tier right there. My bad. But uh, the Jazz, Laurie Markkinen, he's going to be a borderline all-star. Uh, I like Keontae George. Walker Kessler still got a lot to be desired. Um, I think John Collins needs to be traded, though. I think... The Jazz need to run marketing at the four and get like another uh, point guard out there. Uh, Colin Sexton is all right, I guess, but I think the Jazz are just like a borderline play-in team as their ceiling. Oh, next we got the Phoenix Buns. The only reason they're this low, uh, KD is getting a much much older. Bradley Beal contract is not great. Devin Booker cannot show up in the playoffs. It's gonna be really hard to tool around this roster. They don't own any draft picks for the next six years, or they don't have control of their draft picks for the next six years. Up next, we got the Golden State Warriors. They had the highest payroll in all of basketball this season, and they didn't even make the playoffs. I think Clay Tom I think it's time to break it up between the uh, Steph, Clay, and Dre. Um, Clay Thompson needs to be needs to go. Chris Paul needs to go. I still don't understand why Chris Paul went to the Warriors. I said it back then. I'm gonna say it again. Warriors, they need a center. They need they needed a center for it seems like their whole uh, time. That they were not able to win championships. Uh, James Wiseman, arguably one of the worst number two overall picks of all time, right up there with Hashim Thabust. Up next, we got my Los Angeles Lakers. Um, yeah, it's. I think LeBron's gone. If LeBron's gone, we need to move D'Lo and like Terry on Prince. Like I like Austin Reeves and AD, and we just got to build around AD. Uh, he's been played his most healthiest healthiest season as a Laker. Um, I just think once LeBron's gone, a lot of the pressure will be gone off the Lakers and people will stop seeing us as title contenders because we got lucky in 2020 because AD was unstoppable. But 
I hate this this whole play in thing because the Lake, Lakers are not going to be able to get out of the play in if LeBron James stays on the Lakers. Up next, got the LA Clippers. James Harden looked like a kajillion years old this season. Uh, Russell Westbrook's getting ready to retire. Kawhi Leonard can never stay healthy, and Paul George can't do it by himself. Um, Paul George is a great number two option to Kawhi Leonard, but Kawhi Leonard is just unable to stay on the floor. Up next, got the Miami Heat. Uh, with Jimmy Buckets getting really up there in age, uh, not being able to stay healthy. It, it, that's the thing with these uh, older teams. They, they cannot stay healthy. Like Kawhi Leonard, Jimmy Butler, AD was somehow healthy. And then uh, the Warriors were just way too small to go against the Kings in that play-in game. Up next, we're starting to get into teams that could have some upside in the next season. we got the Houston Rockets, who had a really good end to their 2024 season. Almost knocked the Warriors out of the play-in, and I think the Rockets would have been a much better, much better matchup than the Golden State Warriors for the Kings. I love, I love Alpren Sengun. Jalen Green's a really good uh, scorer, and they get a couple more uh, solid point guards. I think they're going to be able to get the job done. Jabari Smith Jr. is a solid forward. Uh, Cam Whitmore still has a lot to be desired, but they need that point guard to be able to facilitate, facilitate the ball. I know it's got the Memphis Grizzlies. They're just a big question mark with John Morant, as it usually is. Uh, never able to stay healthy. You never know if he's going to get suspended again. And, man, the Grizzlies could have had a really good season. Desmond Bain is a really good basketball player. They got a diamond in the rough in, like, Gigi Jackson and Vince Williams Jr. We'll see where the Grizzlies go next season. Up next, we got the Toronto Raptors. We got Scotty Barnes and the crew. I really like the pairing of R.J. Barrett and Scotty Barnes, um, other than the fact that they can't really shoot from outside the arc. But, I mean, they both. everyone loves to share the ball in Toronto. They just don't have that go-to score. I mean, Emmanuel Quickly, I guess, is a go-to score, but they need, they need that uh, number one option. Like, if Kawhi Leonard was still on the Raptors, I think they could have won an extra championship instead of him going to the Clippers when he first left uh, Toronto, but that's just a big what-if. Up next, we got the San Antonio Spurs. Um, I expect Victor Wembanyama not to have a minute restriction like he did this season, and he still made all defensive first team as a rookie. Oh, he should have won DPOI over Rudy Gobert, but uh, that's neither here nor there. Victor Wembanyama is going to be a stud, especially if the Spurs trade for Trey Young or DeJounte Murray. I would love DeJounte Murray to go back to the Spurs other than Trey Young, but we'll have to wait and see what the Hawks do. Up next, we got the Sacramento Kings. They're getting close to this, like, um, L.A. Clippers, Miami Heat team in terms of their ceiling. Uh, I don't know. So I feel like Sabonis has played his best season in the NBA. He, he can get you uh, 18, and thir- or 18 and 11, 18 and 12 a game, but uh, Kings need another, another guy that can put the ball in the basket if it's not De'Aaron Fox. Malik Monk's a really good bench player. I expect Keegan Murray to have some big things in this upcoming season. I think Keegan Murray needs to emerge as that second guy on the team. Up next, we've got the Cleveland Cavaliers in my number 12 spot for now. Um, it depends what Donovan Mitchell is going to do. He was unable to stay healthy in that Boston series. Uh, I don't know. The Cavs left a lot to be desired. Up next, got the Orlando Magic. This team's on the up and coming. I wouldn't be surprised at all if the Magic clinched the top four seed next year just because uh, we don't know what the Bucks are going to be doing in terms of the regular season. But, yeah, I, I still I will talk about the Bucks when we get there. But I love ba- Paolo Bancaro. Jalen Suggs is a really good defender. And then you've got um, Franz Wagner. Sorry, Franz. Took me a second to get there. But I, I think they need a competent center that can also... Like, if, if the Magic had Kristaps Porzingis or, like, just someone that's a little bit taller, um, they'd be a very scary team. Or they need to go for the more uh, facilitating point guard type because Markel Fultz is a good facilitator, but he's not a good outside shooter. Um, dude, Trey Young to the Magic, though, would also be pretty cool as well because the Magic's already a really good defensive team, and they're gonna, they'd probably be able to make it work. Up next, got the New Orleans Pelicans. Hopefully, Zion Williamson can lay off the video games and Doritos and Mountain Dew because the Pelicans, 100% healthy. They they proved it this season. They were a top seed at one point in the season. And Zion, I don't know about Brandon Ingram, though. I think Ingram is starting to get close to his ceiling. But Zion, if he's able to average like 27 points per game and lead the Pelicans to a top three seed, he'll probably finish top five in MVP voting. 
Up next, got the Philadelphia 76ers. I want to put him higher, but it, just, it comes down to Joel Embiid's health. He would have won MVP this year if he was able to stay healthy. Wasn't able to. That's the story of uh, Joel Embiid's career, to be honest with you. Up next, got the New York Knicks. I want to put... I'm honestly probably going to put the Knicks higher, uh, maybe even higher than the Bucks, because I think the Knicks could have won the NBA championship this year. Not... If they had Julius Randle playing, they wouldn't have won, but if they just had their normal team... Aside from Julius Randle, if everyone was 100% healthy, I think the Knicks could have won it all. Um, they should definitely look to trade Julius Randle as they don't need him. OG Ananobi and Josh Hart more than make up those forward positions, and Randle obviously can't play center. So if they can trade Julius Randle, move Porzingis going back to the Knicks right now, if the Celtics don't win the championship, would be kind of kind of funny. But I don't think you're trading Julius Randle for, for uh, Porzingis on the Celtics. That's not realistic. All right, up next, I'm going to go with the Milwaukee Bucks. Uh, I'm just giving the Bucks the edge just because of Giannis's ridiculousness, to be honest with you. Um, they need a head coach. I think firing, uh, firing Griffin in when they were 30 and 13 was just a really bad move. It still doesn't make sense why they got Doc Rivers on the team, and it still doesn't make sense now. Um, yeah, Giannis is going to be in top three MVP for the next, like, three years. So they need to capitalize this or they're going to lose him. Up next, we got the Oklahoma City Thunder. And at the sixth spot, they would be higher than the Pacers and probably even the Mavericks. But the NBA playoffs haven't concluded yet. So I have the four teams remaining in the playoffs in the top four spots automatically. Thunder are really young. They have everything they need to do to compete now. Uh, it was just their first time in the playoffs. And they made it to the second round. And it went six games. Uh, I expect Jalen Williams and Chet Holmgren to have really big uh, regular seasons next season. And the Thunder, honestly, could easily repeat as the top seed in the Western Conference. Up next, got the Denver Nuggets. I'm actually going to be doing a Denver Nuggets rebuild. It's my first rebuild I've done in years on the channel. But I, when I'm done recording with this, I'm going to film that because I already know what they have to do. So I'm not going to say anything more. You're going to have to go watch that video to find out what I think the Denver Nuggets need to do to get back to the top of the league. All right, now we have the four remaining teams in the playoffs. Obviously, the biggest underdog out of the four teams is the Indiana Pacers. Um, it's just because the Boston Celtics are so loaded, man. Um, the Pacers, I love everything that they got. They have great, they have superstar scoring and Halliburton and Siakam, Miles Turner. I, I can't remember if he finished in a defensive team this year. It wasn't first team, so he had to make second team if he did make a defensive team. I can't remember. But anyways, Miles Turner's a really good shot blocker. Uh, Aaron Neesmith and Andrew Nimhard, both really young players, and they're both able to start in the NBA right now. They're a huge reason why they're in the position that they're in, and not to mention TJ McConnell and Obi Toppin coming off the bench. Mavericks, or uh, Pacers, are, uh, they're going to be a scary team. Up next, we got the Dallas Mavericks. I would have the Mavericks over the Timberwolves because I do think the Mavericks could knock out the Timberwolves in the playoffs this season. Luka's just not 100% healthy, and you can, it looks like it on the floor. But I'm, I'm really excited for that series. I really hope it goes seven really close games. And uh, Luka Doncic is going to be in the top three as long as he's on the Mavericks and Kyrie Irving. And not to mention Derek Lively with an amazing rookie season. Mavericks are going to be up here for a lot to come. Up next, got the Minnesota Timberwolves. And Anthony Edwards, he doesn't like to embrace the Michael Jordan comparison. But aside from Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant, Anthony Edwards is hey he shows that mannerism he talks his trash he backs up his trash talk um i still don't like the pairing of cat and gobert but i mean they're doing they're in the western conference finals it took a year for them to gel and they're here so put some respect on their name and number one you have the boston celtics i mean that's no nothing shocker they're they've um uh, they've only played 10 games in the playoffs so far or oh, 11 technically since they won uh game one but, because I forgot this is coming up after my reaction video, um, they're loaded. Porzingis hasn't even played in in, in the, any of the playoff games. I can't remember if he played in the first round or not. It doesn't matter. Without Porzingis, the Celtics still have the nastiest seven-man rotation in the NBA. And the Celtics are going to be really hard out at any point. Now and in within the next like four or five years, if Tatum, Brown can stay healthy. And if they're able to re-sign Derek White or Drew Holiday, this team's going to be set. But, yep, that is going to do it. Let me know what you guys' thoughts are in the comments section below. You guys are wondering probably why the Suns are so low. Like, they're still going to be, like, a fifth or sixth seed next season. 
but that's like their ceiling. Like these other teams in front of them have a higher ceiling. Other than that, it's been Zach. I'll see you guys in my next video. Football season cannot come any slower, man. Like I'm so ready for football.